Hello and welcome. I'm Mark Seal and this is the Ultimate Guitar Show. We've got a great show for you today. We've got a special guest teacher, Mr. Wayne Johnson, is going to be joining us to teach you guys some pretty intricate jazz stuff, but it's actually feasible to get under your fingers in no time. And then for Riff of the Week, I'm going to show you a little riff off of one of my albums, a song called Above the Clouds off the album Transformation 7. And then we got a couple of performances, one from myself and one from Wayne at the end of the show. So I think you're going to really enjoy this episode. So sit back and enjoy the ultimate guitar show. It starts now. <laughs> We have an incredible guest artist for you today, and he's also going to help me teach. He's going to teach you guys some, some really uh, pretty detailed jazz stuff, but it's actually simple to play when you put it under your fingers. I want to welcome Mr. Wayne Johnson. Thanks so much for coming out and being on the show. My I pleasure. really appreciate it. I'm going to let you take it away. How are you doing? Hey, I'd like to show you something really fun uh, to do with pentatonic scales. I know you've been studying pentatonics with Mark here on some of the past shows, so this might fit perfectly into your schedule. I'm going to show you four pentatonic scales and I'm going to play a simple little jazz progression and it's a very standard jazz progression of a D minor 7 to a G7 I altered the G7 a little by raising the fifth and some people call it flatting the 13th and then I add the flat 9 up here too so it looks just like that it's kind of like that D flat 9 but you put a G on the bass. I know it looks awkward. I use my thumb. You don't have to. You can do it this way too. That's the second chord. The third chord is just a C major 7. Looks like that. Now we'll have slides so you'll be able to see all of this, so pay attention. And the fourth chord is an A7. Now I altered this one as well, just like the second, the uh, G7 chord. So that's the pattern. D minor 7, G7 altered. C major 7 to an A7 alter. And I'm sure you've heard this pattern before, this progression. Now here's the fun thing. There are, in the, in the jazz world, there are these very cool kinds of scales that you can play over. And there's a lot more than just one for every chord. So I've taken a pentatonic uh, study, and if you, a pentatonic scale is five notes, as opposed to the seven notes that we have. By getting rid of those two notes, you open up just categories of scales. It's, it's amazing how many more scales that you can play uh, as substitutions with these pentatonics. So this is just a simple one to get started. And I wrote this up for a Taylor Guitars Wooden Steel and you can see this, uh, the same slides that you'll see here, you can see in the summer, the spring and summer issue of 2005 of uh, Taylor Guitars Wooden Steel. So check that out. All right. Here's the shortcut, pentatonic substitution shortcut. For the D minor, the rule is on a minor seven, you use a pentatonic scale based down a whole step. So D is the tonic of the chord in question. We go down a whole step, which is two frets. C, C pentatonic scale is what we use over D minor. So here's your simple C pentatonic scale. Now when you play those notes over a D minor scale, you're playing a Dorian mode. And some of the modes get a little bit confusing, so I'm going to try and stay away from the confusing parts. Just think of that C pentatonic being really nice notes over the D minor 7. Now it gets interesting. For the second chord, it's a G7 altered. Now for a dominant 7th altered chord, which this is, sorry, I'm confusing you already, right? The rule is that you use a pentatonic from the bass it's tritone or sharp four note. So it's confusing, I know. Here's what you do. You take the bass note of the chord in question and you count up one, two, three, four, just a regular major scale, then you sharp it. So that's the tritone. Another way to do it is you can look at the sixth and the fifth string. This is your bass note, your G. You can go up a fourth and then raise that. So now we're starting a pentatonic from the D flat. So that's, that, that's the note you play over G7. Now you should be able to use muscle memory with your hands to get through this. You don't have to think about notes, but the notes that you're playing are 
all the, the great notes of a, a dominant seventh altered chord scale. And I'm talking about the, the flat nine, sharp nine, uh, we're talking sharp 11, flat 13, dominant seven. Those are the five great notes that you play over this chord. I'll play a little bit after I finish this so I can demonstrate it. All right, our third chord is C major seven. Now, we take a pentatonic scale for a major seven chord up a whole step. Just not like the, the minor seven was down a whole step. Major seven is up a whole step. So C major seven, we go up to D. Now this pentatonic starts on D. Now you incorporate all the notes of a major seven chord scale plus the raised four or sharp 11. So it has that note in it. It's a really great sound. All right, the fourth chord is simple because it's the same as the second chord. It's a pentatonic scale from the bass notes tritone. You remember that formula? So E flat is the tritone. We do pentatonic scale. And there again, that's an altered dominant chord scale. So the four chord scales that you're playing by simply playing these uh, pentatonic scales are you're playing a, a low Korean, I'm sorry, you're playing a, a Dorian minor seven, you're playing a G altered seven dominant chord scale, and you're playing a Lydian chord scale for the major seven. I know, that's confusing. And the last one is altered dominant again. But here's the cool thing. All you have to do as a guitar player, if you noticed, C pentatonic, you raise it a half step, D flat pentatonic for that altered chord sound. For the C major seven, you just raise it up a half step again for the D pentatonic. And then the A flat, I mean the A is uh, E flat pentatonic. So as a guitar player, you know, it's like easy. You just go C pentatonic, D flat pentatonic, D pentatonic, E flat pentatonic. So, and I've done that, uh, you'll see this slide, I've done it just in this first position of the pentatonic scale. Uh, Wayne, I understand you won a Grammy recently. Yeah. Uh, can you talk yeah. about that a little bit? Tell us about that. Yeah, it, uh, it was on a project, uh, the record company that I'm with, uh, Solid Air Records, mm -hmm. and it's nothing but acoustic guitar players. Solo acoustic, there's no bass drums or anything, you know. It's, 
So, you know, right offhand you think, well, that's kind of boring. I did. But when I listen to all the players as a fingerstyle guitarist, you know, everybody plays so differently. So uh, it's, it's actually a very cool concept. So 10 of us got together and we did our favorite Henry Mancini tune. Okay. And, uh, and uh, won a Grammy. Won a Grammy. Hey, hey. It was an instrumental pop album of the year and we all just kind of went, what? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty well, When you say it's boring without drums or bass, hey, it had guitar, that's all it needs, you know? Yeah. So yeah. That, that totally works. It was proof. It was cool. And uh, what do you do? Do you tour? Do you play out with other bands? Or what's your, your main gigs that you're doing during Well, the I've, I've uh, been with the Manhattan Transfer off and on for uh, very many years. And uh, I've been more active as a soloist this last year. So I actually left uh, about a year ago. But uh, they got me going back out on the road with them to some really cool places uh, in a couple of weeks. We're going over to Europe and Russia and some places I've never wow. been. So it'll be a lot of fun. Cool. Yeah, got a, a new record coming out soon. What's and, that? Do you have a title for it? I don't. Okay. I leave that up to my son. He, I, I'm terrible with titles. You know, I'm on uh, most of my records, I'll be playing these tunes and, and I'll go, ah. You know, when you write a song and you, you come up with a cool title, and then you write a song around it, or it make it remind you of something. Absolutely, you get that inspiration. Yeah. It's different. And when you just write off of riffs, or you got a couple of ideas, and then it grows to a song, it doesn't mean as much to me in terms of a title. So no. I just I play it. And my son goes, "That sounds like Firefly," and I go, "Perfect." Yeah, nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's great a, at that. I had an album come about that way as well. But oh, yeah. the title was, you know, vacation, and whatnot. But I totally get that process. Do you ever find that when you have a uh, when you have a particular song that you've written, the title just stands out, and you go, "That's the album." Oh yeah. Yeah, I did that on my last two records, and I got vetoed by the record company. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, the uh, my last record, uh, solo record. Uh, there's a th the third song on it. It's a, a pretty big production piece for a solo guitar. I had to spend probably a week and a half just working on the techniques to incorporate. Uh, percussive aspects yep. in the live performance without screwing up the microphones and and uh, it's called My Secret mm -hmm. and I thought wow that's a great name for the record and I wanted to call it but the record comes in nah, it's, it's got to have a got a gu guitar element in it so uh, anyhow he he wanted to call it one guitar to show that it is in fact just one guitar player or whatever but uh, anyhow it's fine well that kind of explains it too though yeah you know, I mean it lets you know that this wasn't done on multiple guitars even at the yeah. time where maybe it sounds like it? Is that kind yeah. of the concept? Exactly. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And do you have a, a pretty visible presence on the internet? Do you have a website and all that? Yeah, it's uh, called WayneJohnsonOnline.com. If you go to WayneJohnson.com, you'll get, a, I think, a country player. Okay. Or, and uh, there's a lot of other Wayne Johnsons out right. there. So okay. this, this works, yeah. <laughs> this is the real Wayne Johnson here, though. So all, those guys, all those other guys are imposters. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you're, you're tearing it up, and uh, I really enjoy listening to you play. Oh, Wayne and I have been doing these uh, clinics for Taylor Guitars in the last you know, few months, since actually probably about seven months now. And yeah. uh, are you going on the road doing any more stuff for them? Yeah, well, I come back from, uh, from I fly into Minneapolis from Russia on August 13th and, and hit a workshop the next day. Oh, so cool. I'm going to do a, a, a week. I think I have another week or maybe eight or nine workshops for them this year. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being out Thank on the show. You. And uh, you guys, if you get a chance, go to WayneJohnsonOnline.com. Check out his stuff. Definitely get a CD. You'll dig the music. A lot of cool technique and uh, just beautiful music. And we really appreciate you coming out and uh, helping Thank teach you. all these kids. It's my pleasure, man. I'm a huge fan of yours as well. Well, thanks so much, man. Take Absolutely. care, bro. We'll see you. Riff of the Week. Today I'm going to show you a small excerpt from my song Above the Clouds off the Transformation 7 CD. And uh, this little riff, I wanted to do something that kind of put together everything we've done on the last six shows. So in this riff, we've got a little bit of arpeggiating, you know, the hitting of single notes, uh, as well as some hammer-ons, some pull-offs, a couple of slides, all put together, even some power chords in there. So I'm going to play the riff for you, and then I'll break it down for you and show you how to play it. It sounds like this. All right, let's go ahead and call up slide number one. Let's take a look at what it is we're doing. We're going to start by hitting the sixth string open and placing our first finger across the ninth fret of strings four and three. And this is coincidentally is a little bit of a bar chord in the fact that we're barring more than one string. We're going to be hitting two strings, strings four and three on the ninth fret. So we start sixth string open, 
to the ninth fret fourth string and then to the ninth fret third string. And you basically want all three of those notes to ring simultaneously. Now while holding that down, we're gonna add our third finger to the 11th fret of the third string, back to the ninth fret fourth string, and uh, sounds like this. So notice we go back and forth between nine and 11, but again, one of the key things is keeping all the notes ringing together. That gives that kind of fuller chord sound. From there, we're gonna go to the uh, 12th fret with our second finger on the third string, and we're gonna start by hitting the fourth string open. This is gonna become our new bass note, if you will. Sounds like this. We continue to let that ring while we go back, hit the zero again on the fourth string, and then first finger, 11th fret. So it sounds like this, zero, 12, zero, 11. We're gonna go back to the 12th fret, and then here's where our hammer-on and pull-off comes into play. We're gonna hit the 11th fret, hammer on to the 12th fret, pull back off to 11. Sounds like this. And again, the whole time we want that bass note to continue ringing that open fourth string, the D. Sounds like this, the whole section up to there. Now what you're gonna notice is that 11th fret is connected to a slide down to the seventh fret. So we have one big legato phrase right here, if you will. We're gonna hammer from 11 to 12, back to 11, and slide down to seven. So let's put that together. And typically when you do your slides, you wanna to try to look ahead to where it is you're sliding. You don't wanna watch your fingers in the position they're in because what happens is if you try to follow it, you can't follow fast enough and you'll overshoot your note or not go quite far enough. But if you uh, look down to the note that you're sliding to, in this case, if I'm in 11th position, doing that 11 hammer to 12, pull off to 11 riff, my eyes can actually be looking down here at the seventh fret. And my finger, it's like kind of like a magnet, it'll just draw it right to that fret. So that's kind of a nice little tip for you. So that whole second section there on slide one sounds like this. And one more time. Third section, we're gonna start with the fifth string open, our open A as our bass note now. And we're gonna set up a little chord. We're gonna set up our second finger on the seventh fret of the fifth, uh, fourth string first finger, sixth fret, third string. We're gonna hit those three notes in order, five, four, three. And again, while we leave those notes down, we're gonna add our third finger to the seventh fret on the third string, and you're gonna have all those notes blend together. Sounds like this. Pick our third finger back up and go back to our first finger on the sixth fret. And back to the seventh fret, fourth string. So the whole third section sounds like this. Then we're gonna come down to the open sixth string, hit the top two strings open, and then our first ending is uh, where the number one there is, it's gonna be second fret, fifth string, fifth string open, second finger, third fret, sixth string, down to second fret. Sounds like this. With that rhythm. Now notice at the beginning of the slide here, we've got the repeat signs, the two little dots on the left. And then we have the two dots after the first ending. We've talked about this in previous shows, but just as a reminder, that number one implies that we're only gonna play that section of music the first time we get to it. The repeat sign sends us back to the beginning. We're gonna play everything again, except when we get to where that number one is, the second time we skip that and we're gonna play the second ending. So let's go ahead and look at what the second ending is. The second ending is simply, I took uh, two power chords, and we did those inverted heavier power chords that we talked about a couple shows ago, where we, we're gonna bar the second fret on strings uh, six and five, and our third fingers are, uh, third fingers gonna be on the fourth fret, fourth string, and our pinky directly below that. And if you'll remember from the show with the power chords, this is an inversion of a power chord. So actually, the root note is not our lowest note, but we have the fifth on bottom, but it creates that heavier kind of, heavier rock sound. Sounds like this. And then we're gonna do the exact same chord shape moved up to the fifth fret. So it sounds like this. So let's do the whole slide, all four sections, actually no, all five sections counting the second ending and I'll play it slow in context. It sounds just like this.
This program has been made available by the generous support of Musicians Institute, the world's most innovative school of contemporary music.